Hello, welcome to Astronautics for Exploit. I am Dr. Anyashola Ogundele, and I will be presenting suborbital spaceflight service provider companies. The overview of my presentation is as follows. Suborbital spaceflight companies, rocket-powered vehicles, high-altitude balloons, and parabolic aircraft. In recent years, several companies have emerged seeking to develop low-cost suborbital launch capabilities, primarily to serve the prospective space tourist market, but also to provide access for researchers and engineers. Access to commercial suborbital spaceflight has the potential to open up a new realm in research and development, providing additional ways of advancing technology readiness level opportunities. Through a user-focused program, researchers, engineers, technologists, and educators will be able to conduct hands-on suborbital research. Low-cost frequent flights will expand opportunities for hands-on learning, participatory research, and eventually personal experience in space flights that are critical to developing technical and scientific competence. If the potential is demonstrated, one can envision that students will be able to take a range of payloads from concept through operations in the course of an academic program, thereby providing additional training options for the next generation of scientists, engineers, and space explorers. Opportunities are banned for educators and the general public to participate in inspirational projects. A major turning point for private spaceflight occurred on June 21, 2004, when Spaceship One, the first non-governmental crewed spacecraft, flew 62.5 miles, that is 100 kilometers, above Earth's surface. In doing so, the vessel crossed a boundary called the Kama Line, the accepted point of entry to space as defined by the International Astronautical Federation. After two more flights in 2004, one on September 29 and the other one on October 4, the piloted vehicle won the $10 million Ansari S Prize for repeated flights in a privately developed reusable spacecraft. Suborbital space flight companies. Presently, suborbital space flight Companies are developing low cost suborbital launch capabilities and cutting edge technology for the provision of space tourism and space access to researchers and engineers. Currently, different companies that are developing commercial suborbital spacecraft with a range of research and development capabilities are as follows. Rocket power vehicles, we have the companies Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, Essos Aerospace, Master Space Systems, UP Aerospace, Copenhagen Suborbitals, China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, Airbus Defense, and Space Space Plane. Our altitude balance, the companies offering this service are Amuka. Armstrong Designs, Near Space Corporation, Raven Aerostar, Aerodynamics, and Worldview. And for parabolic aircraft, we have the company Zero Gravity Corporation. Rocket powered vehicles. Rocket powered vehicles categories are classes of vehicles that are typically recoverable and reusable after launch. There are two main categorizations, which are suborbital reusable launch vehicles, which reach high altitude and may include pillars of microgravity, and entry, descent, and landing lander vehicles, which specialize in entry, descent, and landing technologies. These pictures show suborbital reusable launch vehicles of Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic. 
Examples of rocket power vehicles complaints are Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, Essos Aerospace, Master Space Systems, and UP Aerospace. They are performing their operation for testing robotic systems, in space manufacturing metals, EDL and navigation systems, technology systems, electronics and information, atmospheric and service sampling, and biological experiments. These pictures show various operations and activities of Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, Essos Aerospace, Master Space Systems, and UP Aerospace. Blue Origin was founded in year 2000 by Jeff Bezos. It is a privately funded aerospace manufacturer and suborbital space flight services company based in the United States of America. The company is employing an incremental approach from suborbital to orbital flights with each developmental step building on its prior work. The company's suborbital vehicles are Goddard and New Shepard. This picture shows Blue Origin New Shepard rocket on the launch pad. The objective for Blue Origin is to make access to space cheaper and more reliable through reusable launch vehicles. The company focuses on development of technologies for rocket-powered vertical takeoff and vertical landing vehicles for access to suborbital and orbital space. It's initially focused on suborbital space flight. These pictures show vertical takeoff and vertical landing of Blue Origin's New Shepard. Blue Origin Godard. The Godard experimental vehicle is a precursor to Blue Origin suborbital New Shepard vertical takeoff, vertical landing vehicle designed to take a small number of astronauts on a suborbital journey into space. It flew for the first time on November 13, 2006. This picture shows Blue Origin Godard. Blue Origin New Shepard, a suborbital space flight system composed of two vehicles, a crew capsule and a rocket. A crew capsule accommodates three or more astronauts launched by a rocket booster. The two vehicles lift off together and are designed to separate during flight. After separation, the booster is designed to return to Earth so as to perform a vertical landing while the crew capsule follows a separate trajectory, returning under parachutes for a land touchdown. Both vehicles are intended for recovery and reuse. New Shepard is controlled entirely by onboard computers. In addition to flying astronauts, New Shepard is intended to provide frequent opportunities for researchers to fly experiments into suborbital space. Fudging Galactic. Fudging Galactic also make rocket powered vehicles. It was funded in year 2004 by Richard Branson and his British Fudging Group. Fajin Galactic is a space flight company that operates in and is incorporated in the United States. It is developing commercial spacecraft and aims to provide suborbital space flights to space tourists. Fajin Galactic suborbital spacecraft are here launched from beneath a carrier airplane known as White Knight 2. This picture shows Fajin Galactic's Spaceship 2. Fajin Galactic Operation Fajin Galactic will operate piloted suborbital vehicles built by the spaceship company and designed by SCADE Composites. 
The vehicle system features a jet-powered carrier aircraft as the first stage and an air launch rocket-powered second stage, carrying six spaceflight participants. Re-entry is managed by a unique federal flight control surface. The cabins of the twin fuselage carrier aircraft exactly duplicate that of the spacecraft, facilitating the training. These pictures show launching of Spaceship 2 and White Knight 2, and Spaceship 2 being nested between the two fuselages of its White Knight 2 carrier airplane before the glide test. Fagin Galactic Aircraft and Spacecraft, Ha, Motherships, and Spaceships. The Mothership is White Knight 2 which is referred to as FMS if and the spaceships are Spaceship 2, VSS Enterprise, VSS Unity, and Spaceship 3, VSS Imagine, VSS Inspire. These pictures show VMS if VSS Enterprise, VSS Unity, and VSS Imagine. What night 2? It's a special aeroplane built as the mothership and launch platform for the spacecraft Spaceship 2 and the uncrewed launch vehicle Launcher 1. The mothership is a large fixed wing aircraft with two hulls linked together by a central wing. It is a two stage to suborbital spaceman launch system used to lift the Spaceship 2 spacecraft. To release altitude. This picture shows White Knight 2, which is based on the successful mothership to spaceship 1, White Knight, which itself is based on Proteus. Fagin Galactic Spaceship 2, VSS Enterprise, VSS Unity. The spacecraft Spaceship 2 is planned to achieve a suborbital journey with a short period of weightlessness, carried to about 16 kilometers or 52,000 feet underneath a carrier aircraft. White Knight 2, after separation, the vehicle will continue to over 100 kilometers in the command line, which is a common definition of where space begins. This picture shows Spaceship 2 with six passenger seats and a total of 17 windows a large circular mirror at the back of the cabin allows passengers to see themselves floating. Fagin Galactic Spaceship 2, VSS Enterprise and VSS Unity. The time from liftoff of the White Knight booster carrying Spaceship 2 until the touchdown of the spacecraft after the suborbital flight will be about two and a half hours. The suborbital flight itself will be only a small fraction of that time, with weightlessness lasting approximately six minutes. Passengers will be able to release themselves from their seats during these six minutes and float around the cabin. This picture shows launching of Spaceship 2 to the edge of space. Fighting Galactic Spaceship 2, VSS Enterprise, was the first Spaceship 2 space plane built by Skilled Composites for Fighting Galactic. It was based on, of, on upscaling the design of record-breaking Spaceship 1. Spaceship 2 made its first powered flight on April 2013. Enterprise was destroyed during a power test flight on 31st October 2014. This picture shows VSS Enterprise first flight. Fagin Galactic Spaceship 2 VSS Unity. VSS Unity, the second Spaceship 2 suborbital rocket powered crewed space plane for Fagin Galactic, is the first Spaceship 2 built by the Spaceship Company. It will be used as part of the Fagin Galactic fleet. It first reached an altitude of more than 50 miles, that is 80 kilometers, 
on 13 December 2018. This picture shows Spaceship 2 Unity, VSS Unity. Virgin Galactic Spaceship 3, VSS Imagine and VSS Inspire. VSS Imagine roll, was rolled out on 30 March 2021 and it is a Spaceship 3 class suborbital rocket powered crewed space plane. It is the first Spaceship 3 to be built and will be used as part of the Virgin Galactic fleet. VSS Inspire is under construction. This picture shows Spaceship 3. This picture shows comparison of Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic rocket powered vehicles. New Shepard versus VSS Unity. New Shepard launches into suborbit together before capsule separates. Rocket returns to launch pad and capsule returns via parachute. Six passengers flash autonomously with no crew. For the VSS Unity, it is lifted to altitude by carrier aircraft called VMS if lands back on Earth on runway like a plane, and it involves two crew and four passenger species. This picture shows New Shepard versus VSS Unity. Another rocket-powered vehicle provider company is Essos Aerospace Systems and Technologies. Essos Aerospace Systems and Technologies is an aerospace manufacturer and developer of reusable launch systems intended to support unmanned orbital spaceflight launches and is based in Cardo Mills, Texas. It was founded in May 2014. Essos Aerospace is based on both technologies and people from Amadillo Aerospace, a company founded by video game developer John Carmack. The company focus is on suborbital research rockets with an intent of initially launching microsatellites and eventually progressing to autonomous spaceflight. This picture shows Essos Aerospace reusable rocket. Another rocket-powered vehicle provider is Mastin Space Systems. Mastin Space Systems is an aerospace manufacturer startup company in Mojave, California, that is developing a line of reusable vertical takeoff, vertical landing rockets, initially for uncrewed research suborbital space flights, and eventually intended to support robotic orbital space flight launches. It was funded in 2004 by David Mastin. It competed in, in the NASA and Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge X Prize in 2009, winning the level one second prize of $150,000 and the level two first prize of $1 million. On 2nd November 2009, it won first place in the level two category with Amadino Aerospace coming in second. This picture shows Mastin Space Systems rocket. Mastin Space System approach. Mastin Space Systems is focusing on providing unmanned suborbital flights using off-the-shelf technology so as to reduce cost and turnaround time. The company cites operability, fast turnaround, and providing rapid prototyping flight hardware test beds as its core approach to suborbital launch vehicle development. This picture shows Mastin Space Systems Zodiac rocket vehicle. Another rocket powered provider vehicle is UP Aerospace. It is a, a private space flight corporation headquartered in Denver, Colorado. All launches are suborbital, so that they do not complete one orbital revolution. Launches are conducted from the company launch facility at Spaceport America in Upham, New Mexico. 
It was founded in 1998 and incorporated in 2004 by Jerry Larson. The approach is to provide suborbital transportation for corporate, military, and educational payloads via their space loft SL, sanding rocket launch vehicles capable of lofting a 79 pounds, that is 36 kg payload, to a suborbital trajectory with an apogee of about 71.5 miles, that is 115 kilometers, and it takes only 60 seconds to cross the camel line, the official edge of space at 100 kilometers. This picture shows UP Aerospace rocket poised to launch at Spaceport America in New Mexico. Another rocket powered vehicle provider is Copenhagen Suborbitus. It is headed by Christian von Bentzen and Peter Madsen and based in Denmark. It is the world's only crewed amateur spaceflight program for human space travel. From 2011 to the present day, the company has designed and flown six rockets and capsules from their floating launch site in the Baltic Sea. This picture shows sea launch by Copenhagen Suborbitus. The mission of Copenhagen Suborbitus is to fly amateur astronauts to space above 100 kilometers on the suborbital spaceflight in a space capsule on the Spica rocket and return them safely to Earth. The company is working to develop a series of suborbital space vehicles designed to pave the way for manned spaceflight on a micro sized spacecraft. This picture shows Tico Brahe being stacked. Copenhagen suborbital timeline is shown in this picture. In 2011, there is E1 X, 2012 TDS Smart Rig, 2013 Shapira, 2014 E2 X, 2016 Nessu 1, 2018 Nessu 2, and beyond we have the Spiker. The key program elements are launch platform. Spica rocket, Spica capsule, BPM 100 engine, astronaut selection, and crowdfunding. Goals and records achieved by Copenhagen Suborbital Company are as follows Most powerful amateur rocket ever flown. First amateur rocket flown with a payload of a full size crash test dummy. First main engine cut off, command sent to, received and performed by an amateur rocket. Handling and orchestration of a sea launch by a small budget organization. The space capsules of Copenhagen Suborbital Company are Tico Brahe and Tico Deep Space. Tico Brahe is micro spacecraft named Tico Brahe after the Danish astronomer. This picture show it one S Tico Brahe lifting off from MLP Sputnik and Tico Deep Space during testing of the launch escape system. Another rocket powered vehicle provider is China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology. Design a simple one piece space plane whose design can be scaled up to carry more people, designed a winged rocket that takes off under its own power and are differentiated from Spaceship 2, which must be carried to high altitude by an aircraft before firing its own rocket. This picture shows Chinese winged rocket designed to be able to carry 20 passengers. Airbus Defense and Space Space Plane is another complaint that provides rocket-powered vehicles. It's a suborbital space plane concept for carrying space tourists proposed by EADS Astrium, which is currently Airbus Defense and Space, the space subsidiary of the European Consortium EADS, currently Airbus. 
It is a rocket plane with a large wingspan, straight rearward swing, and a pair of canals. This picture shows Astrium suborbital space plane. High altitude balloons. Large balloon systems can reach a nominal altitude of 30 kilometers and can also typically sustain the longest duration of the suborbital vehicles in hours, days, or even weeks at a time. This makes them ideal for payloads that benefit from extended periods of data collection. Ideal for testing at observation instruments, sun sensitive and solar instruments, other instruments and technologies that may benefit from high altitude observations, both to ground and into space and drop tests. Examples of high altitude balloons company are Near Space Corporation, Raven Aerostar, Worldview, Hamoka, Angstar Designs, and Stratodynamics. These pictures show various activities of NSC Balloon, Worldview, and Raven Aerostar. Near Space Corporation has operated since 1996 as a commercial provider of high altitude near space platforms and flight services for government, academic, and commercial customers. The different balloon system of near space corporation are small balloon system, nano balloon system, and high altitude shuttle system. This picture shows launching of NSC balloon born high altitude drone from Tillamook, Oregon, carrying a special payload with FAA new technologies on board. Small balloon system is ideal for payloads needing additional mission services, including real time command and control and payload telemetry, target duration of more than two hours target altitude of more than 30 kilometers, target microgravity duration not yet available, and the payload capacity of nominal 10 kg. Custom options also available for larger payloads. The payload mounting are internal or and external. This picture shows NSC balloon. Nano balloon system is an option for small payloads with minimal integration requirements. The target duration is more than two hours, target altitude more than 30 kilometers, target microgravity duration not yet available, the payload capacity of nominal one kg for standard services, and payload mounting of internal or external. This picture shows launching of NSA balloon. High altitude shuttle system. This balloon born autonomously piloted shuttle aircraft enables rapid payload recovery. The target duration is more than two hours based on mission requirements. The target altitude is 30 kilometers, payload capacity of 10, km, 10 kg, and payload mounting, which is internal. This picture shows NSC launch team. Completing pre-flight rigging and checks at the Madras Municipal Airport in Madras, Oregon. Rafin Aerostar is another high altitude balloon provider. Several classes of balloons are available for long duration and navigational missions, stratospheric missions, scientific engineering and communications advances, and gathering of meteorological Tata. This picture shows Raven Aerostar balloon. Several classes of balloons are available for long duration and navigational missions, stratospheric missions for scientific, engineering, and communication advances, and gathering meteorological data, and many more. These services are being provided by Raven Aerostar. This picture shows Raven Aerostar balloon ready for launch. 
Rapid aerostar targets are target duration of 1 to 8 hours, altitude more than 30 km, kilometers, type 3 kilometers for payloads less than 5 kg. Target microgravity duration not yet available and the payload capacity of nominal 45 kg. A fuel payload can be accommodated as a non-standard service. Internal and external payload mounting. The payload envelope is open to the external environment. This picture shows Raven Aerostar balloon ready for launch. World Fuel Enterprise is another high altitude balloon provider. It's a private American near space exploration and technology company headquartered in Tucson, Arizona. Funded with the goal of increasing access to and the utilization of the stratosphere for scientific, commercial, and economic purposes. The company designs, manufactures, and operates stratospheric balloon flight technology for a variety of customers and applications. This picture shows conduct of Worldview inaugural stratolite launch from Spaceport Tungsten on Sunday, October 1st. 2017. Worldview Enterprise is a remotely operated navigable on crew stratospheric flight vehicle system with station keeping capabilities suitable for payloads requiring data acquisition over long durations. So the stratolite has the following targets the target duration of up to weeks. Target altitude of 15 to 23 kilometers to enable long duration on long dual missions. Target microgravity duration not yet available. Payload capacity nominal 50 kg. Custom options available for larger payloads. Payload mounting is external. This picture shows the stratolite using proprietary altitude control technology to rise and lower in the stratosphere, annexing the natural currents of various stratospheric winds to provide point-to-point -point navigation and loitering. World View Enterprise A-Class Fixed altitude balloon system designed for payloads requiring short duration data acquisition, target duration of more than two hours, target altitude of more than 30 kilometers, Target microgravity duration not yet available. Payload capacity between 1 and 1,000 kg. And the payload mounting is external. It has much larger payload capability and higher operating altitude compared to the stratolite. This picture shows the stratolite at altitude during its 16 day flight. Parabolic flight. Zero Gravity Corporation provides parabolic aircraft activities. As a weightless flight operator, Zero Gravity Corporation is an American company which operates weightless flights from United States airports. Zero G Company caters for both tourists and researchers alike. It was founded in 2004 by Peter Diamandis. Astronaut Baron K, Lichtenberg, and NASA engineer Ray Cronus. In March 2008, the company was acquired by Space Adventures. This picture shows Zero Gravity Corporation's expansion plans that will require the company to acquire the Zero G plane. This is the picture that shows the Zero G plane. Zero Gravity Corporation Zero G's Weightless Lab Research Program provides unprecedented access to space environment so that clients may achieve technological advances in biomedical and pharmaceutical research, fluid and fundamental physics, material science, aerospace engineering, space exploration hardware, and human space habitation. This videos 
show with less flight with zero gravity. The zero G weightless experience. The zero G weightless experience enables people to float like an astronaut and to experience true weightlessness. It's not a simulation but a real life minus gravity. Specially modified Boeing 727 flies in parabolic arcs to create a weightless environment, allowing people to float, flip, and soar as if one was in space. This picture shows physicist Stephen Hawking in zero gravity. The zero G experience working principles. Zero G specially modified Boeing 727 G Force One aircraft achieves weightlessness by flying aerobatic maneuvers called parabolas. Specially trained pilots perform the acrobatic maneuvers, which are not simulated, and zero G passengers experience true weightlessness. The plane is initially pulled up to approximately 45 degrees nose high. This picture shows maneuvering of Boeing 727 G Force 1. For more information, contact Astronautic for Export. Thank you.